What's good, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Silas Akron here, bringing you yet another Sword and Shield discussion video. This one is kind of interesting. It's not news, discussion. Um, and I gotta talk big time about what I feel about the new, what I'm calling Galar OU, which is restricted by the Galar decks and how that metagame is going to look. I have done a fair amount of analysis, estimations, figuring out what I think is gonna be good, what I think is gonna be bad, and what I think usage is going to look like for particular Pokemon in the next generation with what we currently know. I don't have the, I don't have all the cards, I don't have all the answers, you know, I don't know what Pokemon are gonna be released or anything along those lines. All I know is the 174 Pokemon that have been released by, the, or that have been shown to be in the game by uh, Serebi and other sources. And making some heavy assumptions here with, you know, Melmetal and um, stuff like that. Excuse me. Um, yes, making some heavy assumptions here. Trying to figure out what I think is going to be where and why and some of the sets I think are going to be really big in this metagame with some of the spreads. Only a couple. Um, and we're really only going to talk about OU because I'm going to not lie right now. UU is fucking trash. UU and below. Basically only three tiers exist in this current format. OU, UU, and NU. And UU and NU are full of trash mons. Like completely. Like maybe a couple of niche mons here and there, but nothing significantly viable. Um, like I said, we have 174 Pokemon, which basically gives you a Pokemon Let's Go kind of pool of amount of Pokemon. About the same skill level, a little bit stronger on the upper side, um, but way weaker on the lower side when it comes to strength. And also no Megas. Uh, Dynamax affects some Pokemon a little bit, but not in a huge way. Um, only a couple of Pokemon get very much affected by uh, Dynamax, and I will talk about those very, very shortly. Um, so let's start at the top. So basically, we only got three Pokemon in Ubers right now. That would be Zacian, Zamazenta, and Hawlucha. I'm about to talk about Hawlucha, but first, Shadow Tag, Arena Trap, Baton Pass, and all the small gun clauses are assumed here because even with even though Doug Trio is in this game, same with Wobbuffet. I feel like those mons in particular would be super broken in a limited meta game where there's even less to check them. Uh, Wobbuffet especially just sounds really dumb. Um, just imagine trapping everything and killing everything. Right? It would be stupid. It would be way beyond stupid. Anyway, Zashi and Azamazenta are obviously going to be broken. I feel like they might even be very good in a Ubers tier with the, all of the Ubers brought back like normal. Um, but in this case, they're just going to be broken. Now, you don't see Mewtwo here, and that's because I'm fairly confident, and you also don't see Zapdos anywhere near the top, I'm fairly confident that not all of the Let's Go Pokemon are being brought over. I think it's only the Pokemon in the Galar decks, just like they've said for everything else. I wanna, I don't have it up, but I might try and put it up here. Hold on a quick second. So he just dropped the bombshell. Okay, so he just dropped the bombshell. Okay, so basically he just asked Masuda, so I'm hunt shiny hunting and let's go. Can I transfer those Pokemon over? Alright, so that's the that's the nugget of information I was looking for. He says that as long as they're in the Galar regional decks, they can be transferred. Which basically means no, you can't. Yeah, your Pokemon, some of your Pokemon are stuck. So not all of the Gen 1 Pokemon. So sorry, Blunder, you're not going to get all of your Gen 1 Pokemon in, in Sword and Shield. Only some of them. Anyways, let's move down the list. Let's look at this B 
big boy, Halucha. Why is Halucha sitting in Ubers right now? Because Halucha isn't anywhere near broken at the moment. But that's the point. Right now, it's still an OU level Pokemon and a threatening sweeper with even less Pokemon to check it in this metagame. But there's one key thing that, you know, here's what I thought about Halucha. I was thinking to myself, at first I had this thing in UU. And then somebody informed me that, you know, in Gen 6, it was UUBL, right? And I'm like, oh, well, and then I guess it would be at least UU, if not OU. Um, and then it occurred to me, you know, I was thinking there, like, there will be no Tapu Koko, so you can't just set up Electric Seed. And then I see the news about the Galar deck, or the, the Max moves. It turns out the Electric move sets up terrain, as well as the Grass move sets up terrain, the Psychic one sets up terrain, and the Fairy one sets up the terrain. So, Halucha not only can abuse terrains from other Pokemon potentially you know you could you could Dynamax an electric type Pokemon go for the electric move set it up electric terrain let that Pokemon die and then go out to Halucha not only can you do that you can set up electric terrain for itself with Thunder Punch as you can see on my set I have basically the same unburdened set except this one has Stone Edge and Thunder Punch you don't even need Stone Edge. You could put Drain Punch. I had Stone Edge on there for Zapdos. You don't even need that. Thunder Punch will set up its own electric terrain. And under Dynamax, it basically then, it gets plus two speed, plus one, so it gets plus three speed through the Unburdened Boost and the Dynamax Boost. It gets plus two defense with the Electric Seed and the other one. Plus it gets a boosted electric type move in terrain. Oh, yeah, actually, I don't think it's boosted, but, uh, Still, um, it gets a you know a thunder punch off with the plus one attack, and then it can choose to go for storage stance and get up to plus three. Uh, how is this not broken? And we're gonna look at the top mons real quick. Mel Metal, pretty sure that I think it's obliterated by at least plus three uh, high jump kick. Tyranitar, is that even a question? Hippowdon, equal. I definitely know this thing gets obliterated. Hydreigon gets obliterated. The Fable gets obliterated by plus three acrobatics. Mew, same thing. Pelipper, what are we talking about? Snorlax, gone. Weavile, gone. Haxor is gone. Gengar, what the fuck, man? Diggersby, gone. Mimikyu, okay, Mimikyu can take a hit, technically, because it's disguised. Flygon, Ludicolo, you're fucking dead. I don't even think you about speed and rain. Um, Togekiss, psh. Arcanine, you can get an Intimidate off. Big whoop. Quagsire, okay, I don't know Quagsire might be pretty good here. Gyarados, trash. Sylveon, trash. Roserade, trash. Lucario, trash. Milotic might be able to take a hit. Mantine, definitely dead. Noivern, weak as fuck. Seismitoad probably dies. Umbreon dies to a high jump kick. Galvantula dies to acrobatic. Corviknight? Oh, man. You see what I'm seeing here? You have to bring some very specialized unaware mons to beat this thing. And Melmetal and Hydreigon take care of the two unaware mons we have in this metagame, which is Clefable and Quagsire. So honestly, right now and probably, I'm gonna, here's what I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess the Pokedex gets up to mm, it's anywhere between 350 and 550 Pokemon. We're at 174 right now, so it's only gonna get a little bit better than what we have right now. And some of these, some of these usage stats you can already see are pretty insane. They're gonna be a little lower. I could see something like in a realistic meta game where there's about 400 Pokemon, Melmetal might hit 55 usage percent. It's still extremely high though, and there will be a big conglomeration of of overused Pokemon that are just way too strong. And you can see I've marked off Pokemon that I think are way OP in this in this, and where that kind of conglomeration exists. We're going to start at the top of OU and I put a big suspect bracket around this baby because uh, the, like I said I'm comparing this metagame to Let's Go and I don't see a difference. The only difference I see is that Melmetal can now abuse items and it can add to its HP and its attack. It means it's even better. <laughs> Honestly not much changes between Let's Go and this metagame. The only difference is that I was thinking about it, like, I a Papa Berry on Melmetal. Because you know how, well, maybe you don't know. Maybe you're from normal OU and this is your first time and you're, you're trying to figure out what the hell's going on with the hashtag national bring back national decks. By the way, hashtag bring back national decks. 
um, and you're like, okay, well, I don't really know what Mal Metal does. Let me tell you what Mal Metal does. Everything. Well, it doesn't need to do everything. It's just this big, super bulky defensive steel type with a ton of attack. Not the best special defense, but with the lack of fire types, it doesn't care. There's only two fire types in this current set outside of the starters. I mean, I think the starter Pokemon will make OU as well at this rate, but we don't know what they are, so no idea. This thing can just double Iron Bash, so Clefable is pretty useless, and double Iron Bash also destroys Tyranitar. Thunder Punch destroys any flying types such as Pelipper, um, Ice Punch destroys any dragon types, and Toxic hits Pokemon like Hippowdon and Mew to wear them down slowly and surely and it's a like big check those things like weavile and uh yeah this thing is a monster and i was thinking about Ayapapa because the thing is with melmetal is it tends to get down to really low amounts of hp before it gets killed so i was thinking like man if you you manage to get a big hit off on this thing and it does like 75 percent you're like ah oh, I finally beat the big bastard and then this thing gets all of its HP brought back oh and by the way this thing soft checks with Ayapapa Berry it soft checks things like Zapdos so if Zapdos does come into this meta game watch out but anyways it doesn't need to run anything more complex than that it can even put other moves for toxic it could put earthquake which I don't think it actually needs it can run superpower for other Melmetal it can run thunder wave for other pokemon i mean this thing is a monster i just think toxic is its best option right now and i would suspect this pokemon in i in the current metagame i would ban it i would ban the hell out of it i just haven't decided whether i would want to yet it's right on the edge people would discuss this pokemon plus they want to play with melmetal for a while so probably would not get initially banned next we're going to talk about t-tar oh boy Everybody's like, man, what if they had a let's go, like, Meryl and or Wooper and Mareep? Let's go Wooper and Mareep, right? And it's all Johto Pokemon. Like, how would that look? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it would look like fucking Tyranitar. That's what it would look like. Um, it would just look like Tyranitar has gone brazy on the tier. Like, and in this game, it gets everything that it usually needs. Choice Band. Um, I've got Chapel Berry, but you can easily run, uh, I think it's Babiri Berry for Steel types. You can run Shookaberry for ground types. Um, this thing is super strong. And this thing also comes in on a lot of Dynamax Pokemon. Because here's the thing about Dynamax. It only la like If you use Dynamax, you're stuck in that. You can't switch out. There's no switching out for Dynamax. So this thing is going to come in with Choice Band or Choice Scarf. And easily just obliterate any Dynamax Pokemon that it resists. Which it will resist many Dynamax Pokemon. You'll be able, there'll be some scrubs being like, "Hey, I can Dynamax Charizard now. That's so cool!" And they'll like not have Focus Blast on their Charizard, and it doesn't even matter because this thing probably lives plus one Focus Blast from a regular Charizard, anyways. And just go for like Scarf Stone Edge or something, or Band Stone Edge, because that's right, it would still have speed, but. And just obliterate Charizards, like obliterate things like that. Charizard isn't even on this freaking list. I know. I think I completely forgot to add Charizard to to my OU, or not to OU, but to UU, and or actually probably NU at this rate. I'll do that later. Anyways, moving on. Hippowdon. We always need to have a. Uh, every single OU metagame tends to have a bulky ground type at the top. Now Hippowdon. The only problem, Hippowdon would be at the top, and I actually do see this getting a ton of usage. There's almost no reason not to run Hippowdon in this metagame. It soft walls so much, great Pokemon to get up Stealth Rocks, uh, super bulky, there's no special, there's barely any special Pokemon able to actually one-shot it that are, I would say, popular. You got Pelipper, that's going to be kind of a bitch, but Pelipper is up there because it sets up rain, we'll talk about that later. There's Gengar, but it never one-shots. You've got Ludicolo. I mean, that's only going to be on Rain. Yeah, Rain destroys Hippowdon. No shit. Um, you've got Gyarados, but that's not a special Pokemon. Roserade could probably one shot with Leaf Storm. But, um, and then you got some bulky waters that really don't have the firepower to. to they can cripple Hippowdon, but they cannot one shot Hippowdon. So, and this thing wa soft walls so much. It's super good. 
and uh, it can either run Toxic or Whirlwind depending on situations. I wonder if you can Whirlwind out Dynamax Pokemon. This is a good question. That would be one good way to get rid of them. Let them Dynamax and then they try to... You right? They might even see Protect in this metagame too. I don't even know. But Hippodon, not, not much to talk about. But Hydreigon, let's talk about this. Because I bet a lot of people are like, Wow, Hydreigon, you have that all the way at number 4? Hell yeah, I do. Um... Let's talk about why I have Hydreigon so high up on my tier list. Um, number one, where are the defoggers, the good defoggers? Pelipper doesn't count. It's there for the rain, not for its defog utility. You've got Flygon and Togekiss as others. Both, well, I mean, Togekiss beats Hydreigon, but Togekiss dies to Melmetal easily. At least Hydreigon can get off a of Fire Blast into a shit ton, especially if it's choice specs. Um, Flygon likewise loses to Melmetal. Um, with Defoggers, Mantine? Ooh, I mean, Mantine will be okay. It'll be niche, but it's not a very good Pokemon. Uh, Defoggers, maybe Corviknight, but I doubt it. Where are the Defoggers? I'm in Yu Toga Togatick? We'll talk about that maybe too. Defoggers, where are they? Rapid Spinner, and this is, this is wrong. I have these backwards. Oh, well, not anymore. Okay, Avalug and Brahma. Okay. Avalug is a rapid spinner, the only rapid spinner in the game right now outside of Sarina. I mentioned Sarina? Okay. Where are the defoggers? Where are they? Braviary? Lol. Drifblem? Lol. And now we're in the shit territory. It's not worth talking about. There aren't that many defoggers in this game. And Hydreigon reminds me so much of Latios, except that it's a dark type. And it's got really, really good mixed coverage, unlike Latios. So basically what Hydreigon can do is hit Fire Blast on Melmetal, Super Powers on T-Tars, Draco Meteors on Hip Powdons, Dark Pulses on Mews, Flash Cannons on Clefables. It's so well suited for the metagame that is right around it. That there is no, I don't see why not. Now I've got this wacky ass spread. Ignore me. There's also no fighting types. There's really no fighting type. You go all the way down. Keep going down. Man, where are the, there's a fighting type. Lucario, wow. Keep going down. Oh, there's Halucha, but that shit's gonna be broken. Keep going down. Where are the fighting types? There's Pangoro. Wow, that's not a good one. Sock? Fighting type is a good fighting type? Beware is a good fight. Machamp, I mean Machamp's okay. But where are they? There's only a few, like Jesus. And there's a reason you won't see fighting types at all. It's called my boy Clefable. Let's talk about him next. Clefable will be transferable. So instead of having the terrible version of Clefable that we've had in like Let's Go, for instance, we'll have the full-fledged nasty bullshit that we're so used to. You know, Thunder Wave, Soft Boiled, Moon Blast, Calm Mind, Stealth Rock. It's cosmic Power, Stored Power. Unaware, Wish Protect, Heal Bell, Shenanigans. I, do I need to go over the sets? Do I need to go over why Clefable is a good Pokemon? I don't think so. The only issue with Clefable and why it won't be like 90% usage is because of Melmetal. But take Melmetal out of the picture and honestly Clefable starts to look like a real number one in this metagame. Like, no joke. And it might happen. Now, Mew. I want to talk about Mew. I know Mew is going to be good either way. I have it at number six. That's only because I am currently unknown on what Mew's fate is. We know how to get Mew. It's using the Pokeball thing that you have to spend 50 bucks on. And I highly doubt you can transfer from Let's Go. Not that it would matter. And I highly doubt you can transfer from home. So the only thing that Mew might have is access to some of the TMs and some of its massive tools, such as Defog, um, Soft Boil, though Roost is just as good, but it'll lose out on Defog. It might lose out on Knockoff for now. It might lose out on some other interesting tools that it got in old generations. It's things like Baton Pass, if it is legal, etc., etc. So I don't know where Mew sits right now. And I also don't know the fate of Baton Pass. I really would think no. I think Baton Pass is a shit idea. So let's move down the list. We got Pelipper. 
uh, I don't need to explain this. Honestly, Pelipper is going to be very good because the only other types of weather is sand. And as we all know, rain destroys sand. And honestly, there is no sand to take advantage of. There's no Excadrill at the moment. So right now it is just Tyranitar setting up sand for what? For nobody else. Nobody can abuse it. On the other hand, there are some Swift Swim users that can abuse rain and some offensive water types. Well, not really, but some bulky water types that would love having rain. Um, Pelipper is also a good defogger, so it'll be the defogger on rain. Just simply because like it's not worth putting in another slot. And you honestly will only see the the, the support set. The one with um, Roost and Defog, U-Turn, Scald, holding the uh, the damp rock. Yeah, that's the only set you'll ever see, so I didn't even bother putting it. Snorlax. Let's talk about Snorlax. Right now, it's basically the chancy of this game. Um, it can do some nasty stuff. It can actually set up on Melmetal um, outside of being toxic, so... Um, which is why I put Toxic on Melmetal, is because otherwise Snorlax can beat it 1v1 with Curse. Like, if you paralyze Snorlax, all you have done is just powered up its facade. Like, with Toxic, you can eventually beat Snorlax. So, um, unless people start pulling Banded Immunity Snorlax, God, how meta would that be? Okay, anyways, moving back, moving down. Weavile! Oh! That's a cool addition. If there's one thing this metagame got right, it's including Weavile. Because, like I said, Pursuit Trapping and Revenge Killing will be extremely good in this metagame. And Weavile is one of the best. And with so many Dragon types and Flying types and Psychic types and Ghost types and things weak to Weavile, this thing is just so good. And I'm very excited for Weavile. If anything, that's the only thing I'm excited for in this metagame. Seeing Weavile back in action popular as hell one of the best the fastest pokemon in the game um super good revenge killer super strong banded choice banded pokemon knock off heights of a crash ice shard in pursuit the bread and butter do i need to explain more super good another pokemon i'm excited to see haxorus my boy haxorus is back in ou it's been a couple generations since he was strong enough, but this gen he is going to be the premier offensive dragon type. I mean, look, Flygon is good and all, and I have Flygon below. Flygon is pretty good, but Haxorus is absolutely destructive in its power. This thing is able to, I think, one-shot Melmetal at plus one. Don't quote me. Pretty sure Super Power does a big number. Um... And at plus one, it is going to outspeed so many Pokemon, you know, that aren't Choice Scarf. And it's super strong, 147 base attack. This thing is going to be an excellent Dragon Dance user in a tier where the only Ice type is Weavile. And the other Dragons are, I think, slower without being Scarf. So this thing does outspeed them and gets the Dragon Dance up against them and outspeeds Scarfers of that type. So Scarf Flygon, I'm pretty sure is outsped, and I'm pretty sure Scarf High Dragon is outsped. So Hexorus is looking real damn good, really damn good, and it's even got Poison Jab coverage for Clefable, which I'm pretty sure dies a plus one. So there's that Gengar. We got our boy Gengar back in OU. The only problem is that Weavile is running around, so, um, but still, it's the only offensive Ghost type in the tier, and one of the only good strong special attackers. So. Yes. I want to talk about Diggersby. My boy Diggersby is back. He is so back. His ears are ready to pumble. Super strong Pokemon. Going to be an offensive spiker if need be. Because there's not a lot of spikes in this metagame too. There's one spiker and we'll get to it. Diggersby though. Diggersby though. Is going to be pumbling people. The only resists are Melmetal, and that gets to it killed by Earthquake, I'm pretty sure. Let's move down. Mimikyu. Whoops. Down, not up. Mimikyu. <laughs> the only thing, this is the reason I hate this metagame, is because I was excited to see Mimikyu fall to UU this generation. But alas, officially we will see Mimikyu in OU. And not only in OU, but it will be used quite a lot 
it loses its Z move, but I assure you it will gain something else to buff it. Um, otherwise, not the not the strongest Pokemon, but it can get up a free Sword Stance, so there is that. Let's move the Flygon. Gonna be a great Dragon Dancer and a great Scarf. It'll be one of the premier Scarf users in the tier. Just having that U-turn capability is gonna make it super good as a Scarfer. Getting off little chip here and there, breaking stuff like Mimikyu's disguise, chipping away at Weavile, etc, etc, though. I think what Weavile would not go for Ice Shard. Let's talk about Ludicolo here. And we're getting close to the end of Pokemon that I think are okay in the OU tier. Pokemon that I would say are OU level-ish. Ludicolo is going to be massively powerful in the rain. It'll get a rain boost and a speed boost. And it's modest and it's not that weak. Look at what resists what what resists a Specs Hydro Pump. Mm -mm, no. 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 Yes. Okay. Resists it. But what about Ice Beam? You just make one prediction and it probably gets two killed by Hydro Pump. So no. Definitely not. Mm, no. You might be able to live one. You'll live a Hydro Pump, but not two of them. Yes. But you won't live two of them. Definitely not. You will live with like 10 HP. You will die. You will die. Your disguise is broken. You will die. You will die. Um, you will take a shit ton from Giga Drain. You'll die. You'll die. You'll die. You will take a ton from Giga Drain. You'll die. You'll take a ton from Ice Beam. You'll die. You'll take a ton from Giga Drain. Giga Drain. Ice Beam. Hydro Pump will probably kill this motherfucker. Um, as long as this isn't water absorbed, I mean, Giga Drain destroys this. Hydro Pump, okay, here's a Pokemon that might be able to live two of them. Uh, this will die, that will die, that will die. Look how many Pokemon just die to this Pokemon, like, super strong. Um, Ludicolo is going to be dancing around, making a mess of OU, and Rain will be good. People are like, oh, Rain won't be very good. Are you kidding me? Rain will be excellent in this metagame. There's nothing that resists it. Right, as of right now. But I predict it will be still very good because we'll get, we might get Kingdra, we might even get some other good boys. Maybe some new Swift Swimmers that are even more broke. Who knows? Now we get the Pokemon that aren't so good. I mean, our canine is almost there. It only is here because it, it kind of walls Melmetal a little bit. That's about it. Uh, most of these Pokemon are lame. Lame, lame, lame Pokemon that we don't need to talk about. Let's talk about Roserade. A Pokemon that I have kind of low in usage, but I think it will go up simply because spikes and toxic spikes. Oh my god. And you're probably asking me why the hell is there Worry Seed? Well, because I think one of the premier playstyles might become Hyper Offense. And you might see a team, a RMT, built with Roserade leads. Getting up at least one spike and getting up at least one toxic spike. And you will see teams attempting to counter that with Pokemon such as Espeon. And when I say such as Espeon, I mean actually just Espeon. Because there's no other Magic Bounce users here. They don't exist yet. What a shame. And Worry Seed? That, I mean, look, you're going to lose to Espeon, but if there are any other Magic Bounce users and better ones, you can Worry Seed that Magic Bounce and get up your spike. Like, nice, nice, nice. But if Espeon tries to switch in, you can also do the same thing. But you're probably going to die to Side Shock, so I don't even think you need Worry Seed. That's a Gen 5 tech right there. Moving down, I mean, Lucario kind of, it's the best fighting type in the tier. It gets justified boost from Dark types, so it will be a nice, soft Hydreigon check, but it is slower. It is, it needs a Sword Stance to be any bit strong. It's not a bad Pokemon. It might be higher in usage, though. And we have Sylveon, by the way, too, as a fairy type. It's going to be actually, I think, better than I have it on this list. Let's, I'm going to be honest. Stuff like Milotic and Mantine are pretty just like, they're just like fat Pokemon that will be here. Simply because there are no other good Pokemon. I mean, this is so bare. It's so bad. Noivern. Noivern got added a couple days ago. Um, this is going to be a good choice packs user, I think. It's going to be a nice Defog user as well. Um, it's got really strong moves, you know. Draco Meteor, Hurricane, Flamethrower, Boom Burst, and it's gonna able to trick stuff to like some fat mons, so like Milotic will lose its leftovers and stuff, but I wouldn't want to trick a choice specs to Milotic. That's a bad idea. 
And just look at the shit at the bottom of this tier, like, and it gets worse, man. Toga Tick and Yu Yu, man. Serena at the top of Yu Yu, freaking Jellicent and Pangoro being common. Galissapod being good. Sock being pop. Look at this trash. Sneasel and Yu Yu. Fuck. Clefairy and Enyu. Like, oh, holy hell. Regular Doug Trio and in, in, in Enyu. Sand Force Doug Trio. Oh my god, this is such a. Oh, I do have Charizard. He's here. Okay. And these are my untiered Pokemon. They suck balls. I don't need to explain anymore. Um. Yeah. This tier sucks. <laughs> hey, let me tell you why this tier has ended up like this. Game Freak says, first of all, I gotta, I'm gonna make a really funny joke here. Okay, so, Game Freak, we're gonna make a balanced tier. <laughs> ah, balance. <laughs> we're talking about the game. We're talking about balance. Not the game, not the game. We're talking about balance. Bitch! When has Game Freak ever created anything close to being balanced? Mega Evolutions? Oh yeah, that's for real balance. Let's talk about mm, Mega Mewtwo X and Y. Highest BST in the game. Oh, and say, what is it? 780 BST? Holy hell. Mega Rayquaza. Do I need to explain how broken that shit is? Primal Groudon and Kyogre? Do I need to explain how broken that shit is? Freaking Z moves! Oh, really balanced stuff there, Game Freak. What else is balanced? Oh yeah, Dynamax. Let's take Z Celebrate, let's take Z moves and combine them with weathers and terrain. Mmm, that's a great idea, super balanced. Nobody will be overpowered with that mechanic because everybody can use it, just like Z moves. <gasps> wow, what a broken ass mechanic, Game Freak. Where else have they not balanced? Oh, freaking Intimidate. Freaking Regenerator, stuff like Protean, stuff like, uh, there's so much, huge power. And then their nerfs to Pokemon, stuff like Slacking, they're like, well, I guess we're going to give this thing 680 BST, but we're also, or 600 BST or whatever monstrosity, I think it's 680 actually. We're going to give it like legendary based stats, but we're going to give it the worst ability in the game in Truant. Wait a second, Reggie Gigas. Yeah, we're also going to give that thing legendary stats. And despite it being a legendary, deserving of that kind of power, because it's Reggie Gigas. It's the motherfucker of the Reggies, right? This boy's coming here to wreck everybody's shit. No, we're going to give that thing... The, now we're going to make that the worst ability in the game. Yeah, slow start. Five turns you have to wait. Not one turn, five whole turns. You know, some battles only last 20 turns. That's right, one-fourth of the battle, you can't use your Regigigas, and if you switch out, guess what the counter resets, buddy? So you have to leave it in there for five straight turns. Good fucking luck. Not even VGC. VGC games are like eight turns, dude. What, what the fuck is Game Freak talking about? Balancing Pokemon. You can't balance shit. And first of all, yeah, I'm in rant mode right now. Okay. Listen. This is how metagames work. The more Pokemon you have in a metagame, the more things you have to check big threats in said metagame. The smaller the metagame becomes, the more centralized it becomes. You only have to look at my last video and my analysis of the usage stats in low Pokemon amount tiers. Even as low of metagames such as, I don't know, let's go and um, Gen 1, which is basically where we're at right now with this metagame, currently. You see usage stats like 78% usage Melmetal. I've been modest with these usage stats. I have 33% from you? Bitch, this thing could be 58. This thing, this thing could be 90%. You never know, maybe Hippowdon is extremely popular on every type of team. Stall, balance, semi-stall, and it gets like 90% usage. I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Okay, so Game Freak's idea is to take out some Pokemon, mostly the legendaries, but also all kinds of other Pokemon, all kinds of other strategy. And they think that that's going to create a more balanced tier? Really? 
Okay, you're taking a broken Pokemon. Sure, sure, sure. But you're going to try and create a Pokemon that's a, a metagame that's better? No, it's going to create a metagame that is worse. Where there are more Pokemon used at the top, and it's the same six, and it's terribly bad. Now, the reason, the only reason that Gen 7 is like this is because Smogon has not gone through with some of the bans that I think they need to go through. Look, the metagames do eventually work themselves out as long as all of the broken threats are gone. Right now, I think Gen 7 OU just isn't there yet. And the, the fact of the matter is that there is a top six being used all the, quite a bit. But historically, the farther back you go, the more, the worse it gets. Gen 7, I would say, is an abnormality. You go to Gen 5, it's pretty balanced. And you compare everything except the top few mons and the usage curve is beautiful. But you look as far as soon as Gen 4, as recently as Generation 4, you see Pokemon with like 50% usage sitting at the top of OU and there's 44 below that and 42 below that and like 33 below that. It's like, holy hell, I had no idea that these Pokemon were being used so much. And by the way, guess what? You're probably going to get a Diamond and Pearl sized metagame. So y'all thought that Landorus T at 44% was bad? Wait till you get Melmetal at 50%. Wait till you get Titar at 44%. Wait till Mew and Hawlucha are sitting at like 50%. Just wait. Just wait. You'll all be like, oh man, I miss, I miss Gen 7. It was so diverse. There were so many different sets. You, know, you could check stuff. <laughs> we can't check anything. Game Freak is not given. Like, Game Freak does not know how to balance their own metagame. That's the joke. That is the big joke. And more and more it seems like it's not that they don't have the time or the money. It's really that they think that they're trying to balance the metagame. For who? Who are they trying to balance the metagame for? Their VGC players? Oh my god, that's a big joke. Big joke. Big joke. Let me tell you something about VGC players. They're trash. Okay? Compared to regular OU players, regular VGC players are complete garbage. Okay? And this is all the offense to the VGC players. Yeah, take offense to this. Because I'm calling you out. Okay? I've played VGC players. I've gone in with OU teams, with OU sets, put Protect on a few mons, and crushed VGC players before. Okay? People who said they were regular VGC players. Destroyed them. Okay? I can go on the VGC ladder and compete with those people. And the people who go on showdown are the real ballers, okay? They're the only VGC players that are worth respecting. The only people who I respect in VGC are the people who make it to Worlds and place in top 8. Actually, probably just people who make it to Worlds in general. And anybody who's placed at a regional or national tournament in the top 4. So, Those are people who skill. Everybody else is pretty much garbage. And it's the VGC players who most love this new... Oh, Game Freak is balancing. I'm so happy. Did you know that Game Freak already chooses your metagame for you every single cycle? All Game Freak has to do is say, we're only using the Galar decks. And bam, it's been it's been balanced for you, even though it's not being balanced. But you can, you can happily think it is. But the rest of us now have to live with that Galar decks because Game Freak is pandering to, what, you guys? Man. Game Freak should pander to us, the OU players, the OGs, the real ballers. Alright? So, and those are the people who I see most defending this, being the Game Freak apologists. So, that's enough ranting. This is a terrible metagame. I'm going to update this in a month or two. Uh, and by the way, you say, where are the new, where are the new Pokemon? Where are the new Pokemon? There's one. And there's one. <clears throat> I put Dreadnought way at the bottom. Is there anything else? No. None of the new Pokemon. Oh, and the Corviknight is here. So, like, and obviously these Pokemon. There is nothing worth being put in this list yet. Uh, I think it's called Impidimp. If that thing evolves, it might actually have some OU usage. But right now, nah. Nah, not right now. So, like I said, I'm going to update this in a month or two. If another big batch of Pokemon are revealed, which I doubt it, we're probably not going to get a real list until uh, Sword and Shield is either leaked or when it comes out. So You can build off this metagame in your head. You can be like, what if they added this? What if they added that? Yeah, you can play that game. 
this is basically what the metagame is going to look like in a nutshell, in my opinion. So, this is all. If you liked this video, leave a like. Uh, comment down below your thoughts. Maybe I messed up usage. Maybe uh, there's some other sets I didn't think of. Some other Pokemon that might be good in usage. Let me know. Tell me I'm wrong. Fight me. Fight me in real life. Um, yeah, leave comments. Subscribe if you like my channel. If you like my content. Um, yeah, hit that bell notification. Hashtag bring back national decks. This is all I can say, man. That's all I can say. This is Solid Sakara signing out. Peace.